welcome to uh, Mission Control Houston. I know you guys are just down the street in Building 9 at the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility, uh, but we're inside uh, the Mission Control Center. This is the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Uh, I'm Kyle Herring. I'm the public affairs officer who's on duty this week for space station commentary. And uh, I'm very pleased to be joined by Dottie Metcalf Lindenberger. Dottie agreed to come over and talk to you guys and answer your questions. I think she's an expert at knowing what uh, life in space is all about. She flew uh, in space on a shuttle flight uh, for uh, a number of days. Ten of those days, at least, were docked to the International Space Station that uh, this flight control team in this room is operating right now, watching over uh, the six crew members that are on board. So, Dottie, welcome. Thanks for joining us for this. It's uh, exciting to have you here. Thank you very much, Kyle. And for you guys out there, uh, we're ready to uh, take your questions. Um, my name's Grace. I was kind of wondering, um, uh, how did you like work with payloads? How did they have to be altered in order to work in microgravity? Grace, that's a great question about the payloads. Um, you know, one of the reasons we take payloads to space is because of microgravity and the fact that it offers a different environment for the fluids or the combustibles that we want to look at or the way things are crystallizing. So I personally didn't have a chance to work on any specific payloads. We were a delivery flight, and we brought up several payloads that were to be used in the years following our flight. Thank you. Hi, um, my name's Susan, and I was wondering, was there like a defining point in your life when you knew you wanted to be an astronaut? Susan, that's a great question. I think there were many points along my life that led me in the way to be an astronaut. Um, I enjoyed going to the Museum of Natural History in Denver, where I grew up, and uh, going to the planetarium. And at that time, there was a lot of information coming back about exploration in our solar system, and it fascinated me. As well as, um, I remember the Challenger launch, and that was uh, defining. And then also, um, in middle school, I had some opportunities with science to do some presentations on uh, fuels, alternative fuels, and then also a chance to go to space camp. So I think all of those things helped me realize that I really enjoyed science and I wanted to work hard at it. And uh, when the opportunity came to apply as a teacher for being an astronaut, I took that opportunity. Hello, ma'am. What was the most uh, adrenaline-inducing event that you've experienced in space? I think the most adrenaline-inducing experience was the actual launch. Um, it was very dynamic in the shuttle, and uh, it was you'd been working really hard as a team for that specific day, and uh, it was just exciting that we were going off because there's always the, the chance that there could be a scrub, um, and the weather had been a little bit uh, foggy leading up to our launch, and so it was great to actually be launching, but then the dynamics kick in and you feel the solid rocket boosters lifting you up into space, and uh, it's more than what you feel in the simulator, so that was definitely um, adrenaline-inducing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hannah, and I was wondering if you could go back and change one thing about your past education or the steps that you took to get to NASA, what would it be? Hannah, I think I would um, have taken some engineering courses. They weren't offered at my school, but um, maybe I would have had a chance to, to take a few more. Now, I've been able to learn those things here on the job, but I just I enjoy learning, and so I think that would be something that I would do, as well as um, to just take more advanced classes in other science areas as well as technology because you can never learn too much and I think that's the exciting part about working here is that every day we continue to learn more about ourselves and about the way things operate in space so that we can continue exploring. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cassidy and I was wondering that going into space requires a lot of training and what was the hardest part and what was your favorite part? 
Uh, Cassidy, uh, training definitely. We uh, spent a little over a year as a shuttle crew training, and uh, I think actually the hardest part came when I was doing my initial astronaut candidacy training, and that was the water survival. I had never been in a helicopter dunker, and uh, we went to Florida, and they lower the dunker into the water, and then it flips over, and you have to wait while you're buckled in before escaping. And the first time that I did it, um, definitely it caused some adrenaline. That was an adrenaline-inducing <laughs> event. And uh, I, I ended up doing all of the survival techniques, but it just was not my favorite. It, it's kind of survivable drowning, and it just wasn't as enjoyable to me. But I really enjoyed training as a shuttle crew. Um, we had a great team, uh, this wonderful commander and pilot and mission specialist. And I think that um, the classes that we took and all of our instructors just made it so enjoyable that you wanted to come every day. And I really enjoyed the, the long simulations that we would participate in where you would take a whole flight day and practice everything that you were going to do on that flight day from the robotic operations or maybe to the EV opera EVA operations. We just practiced all of those things and that was very enjoyable. Hi, I'm Betsy, and I was wondering what advice you'd give to an aspiring young scholar in the math or aerospace field. And Betsy, I would give the advice that you should always um, work hard and ask questions. Um, there's going to be challenges along the way, and not everything's going to come easily, but if you um, pursue your interests and you follow up with your teachers or professors and you ask questions, then you will have a rewarding path along that journey. Okay, thanks. Hi, I'm Heather. Um, I was wondering if you knew what you wanted to do before you got to college and like what you knew um, how to, what to major in. Heather, that's a great question. You know, I did set off to college thinking I'm going to be a math major just like my mom. And I took math classes at school and I really enjoyed them, but I wasn't as passionate about them as I was about an intro to geology course. I really enjoyed the field trips. I loved putting together the histories of the rock and figuring out what they meant. And so after that intro course my freshman year, I, I sat down and I decided um, that I enjoyed the math, but I was going to change my direction and go with geology. And I had some opportunities to do internships, both mapping in um, outside of Yellowstone for a summer and looking at the last glaciation there, and then also doing some mapping in southern Colorado. And both of those experiences were very rewarding to me. So I'm glad I made that change. And I think that's important that you realize you can change your path. And many times you might change your path, and that's okay as long as you um, are enjoying Enjoying what you're doing and uh, and finding that it's challenging to you. Okay, thank you. My name is Laura, and my question was: What is the greatest difficulty you've encountered as a woman, and to what extent has that been an advantage? Laura, right, that's a it's a challenging question. Um, you know, as a woman, a lot of my mentors were not women because there were not professors in my field that were women, and so. While I couldn't see someone that looked exactly like me, um, I made the opportunity to meet really great men who taught me lots of interesting things, and I learned a lot from them, and I still keep in touch with my professors to this day. Um, so I think that you can realize that you want to see people that um, maybe look like you, but that that doesn't mean it should limit your possibility that, that you can still find great um, commonalities with uh, with whoever is teaching you. And again, just keep asking questions and believing in yourself. Okay. Great, thank you. Hi, I'm Manu, and I was wondering why science appealed to you when you were a child? Well, science appealed to me because it's 
it's got so many things that are changing and we're always learning something new. So like I said, I enjoyed going to the museum and planetarium because we were learning new information about our solar system and we continue to learn more information every day through NASA and our partners. And uh, I think that's just what always has fascinated me is that it's an unending story and there's so many possibilities. And uh, I just really enjoyed those possibilities and the fact that they were challenging. Um, it meant that I had to do research and that I had to work math problems or physics problems. And I had to spend some extra time. But the satisfaction I had when I solved those problems or when I worked with others to solve problems, that was very rewarding too. So science to me offers a lot of opportunities. It's going to help us in the future. We absolutely need to understand the language of science to be successful in the future and to make this planet better. So um, that's why I like science. Thank you. Hi, my name is Claire. Um, I was wondering how being an educator, educator positive, positively influenced you and like led you to a career working at NASA. Claire, that's a great question. Actually, the questions of my students are what led me to find out that I could be that I could apply as a teacher to be an astronaut. Um, one of my students in an astronomy class had been kind of struggling, and um, I wanted her to realize that I really cared about her questions. And so one day she asked, how do astronauts go to the bathroom in space? That's a very popular <laughs> question that we get here at NASA. And uh, I was really glad she asked that question because I didn't know what the exact mechanism looked like. I didn't know what the bathroom for the shuttle looked like. And in researching it, I also came across then the application process. But I just think being an educator helped me realize that there's more questions that I don't think of. You guys think of some really awesome questions, and those questions are going to propel us to answers in the future. So keep asking them, and uh, I'm, I'm glad I had the opportunity to be a teacher. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gracie, and I was wondering what it was like working with astronauts from other countries such as Russia. Gracie, that's a great, great question. Um, we joined uh, Russian cosmonauts on orbit, and they were fantastic to work with. They had, in fact, just gotten to the space station a few days earlier than us. And so there were, ended up being 13 of us on orbit at one time, which is um, right at the record. There had been other missions that had had 13 as well. And uh, that's a lot of people in space, but it's never too crowded in the International Space Station. And I think the neat thing was that they took us on tours of their module, their um, they were really proud of their systems and showing that to us. And it gave us a framework to appreciate our systems and then to compare them and, and understand more about their systems and how they all work together. Also, while I was on the International Space Station, I had the opportunity to work with two Japanese astronauts, um, Suichi and Naoko Yamazaki. And uh, that was really rewarding, too. It was the first time that there were two Japanese astronauts in space. And Naoko was on our crew and she just worked so hard and diligently and she was just a great crewmate to have. So um, I love the aspect of the International Space Station getting to work with people from all around the world. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stephanie. I was wondering if anyone ever tried to talk you out of pursuing a career at NASA and ultimately becoming an astronaut? And if so, how did you handle that? Well, Stephanie, I feel pretty lucky that the people around me supported me in um, my pursuit. They were realistic, and they said that, you know, it's a difficult challenge. Um, my husband pointed out that there were many talented people that could do the same job, and, and that's absolutely true. And, uh, and yet they all supported um, my applying, and they were um, excited when I received notice that I was going to become an astronaut, and they've continued to be supportive. So my parents supported my dream, my husband, and, uh, and then I even had a chance to bring my daughter along in the journey. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura. Uh, you have so many interests regarding the study of space, from robotics to materials, and there are many applications. How do you balance family and hobbies with the many interesting parts of your career? 
Well, like all things, balancing is a challenge, but uh, you just, you know, you try to work things as you can, and, uh, you know, I, like I said, there's, there's time to be passionate about the science that you're doing and be excited about the training and learning more, and then it's also just as fun to be out on the soccer field with my daughter, and then I have a personal hobby of running that um, helps me stay grounded, too, so all I like to try to keep all those things going when possible. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Ariane. Um, I was wondering if you had known when you were our age that you would accomplish so much, what advice would you have given yourself? Wow. Well, Ari, that's a, that's a really good question. I didn't have any idea that I would be doing all this at your age. I did have dreams of doing it, but I also saw myself doing other things too. And I think that's the important thing about um, as you journey through life is that you see yourself doing multiple things. Um, there's always dreams and goals out there. Uh, one of my passions is hiking, and it's kind of like in hiking you see other mountain ranges that you want to go to, and there's other um, places that you want to venture and travel to. And so it's it's the same in this. I, I dreamed it and I worked hard, but I also knew that um, if this didn't work out, there'd be other things that would work out as well. And so I encourage you to have dreams and pursue them and pursue them with passion. Thank you. Hi, my name is Smriti. I was wondering who or what inspired you to pursue science and to become an astronaut? Well, many people inspired me along the way. Um, I grew up with parents that were teachers and teachers in math and science. And so from a young age, um, they were already setting the seeds of, of growth there. And then I had really great teachers um, in middle school. I had a teacher that took me to California for the alternative fuels where I got had a chance to present to other adults. And that was challenging to me and um, helped me learn more. Uh, and uh, then I had some really great high school teachers, both math and science, that one, my math coach um, was my coach as well for cross country. And uh, just, I continue to keep in touch with them today because they were so inspiring to me and they really helped me work hard and to realize that I had the possibilities within me to be good at math and science. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Julia, and I was wondering what were some of the payloads that you helped send up and which were most interesting to you? Oh, great question, Julia. Um, we actually brought up some um, uh, vaccines to look at that will help us understand more about our um, immune system. And uh, the thing that that's difficult sometimes about the science that you bring up is it can't always be analyzed in a short time frame. And so it's still an analysis, but um, that was one of the uh, experiments that we brought up to space was a way to look at how to better deal with salmonella. And then also we brought up the Window Observation Research Facility, which is called the WARF. And it is a big rack that houses many different cameras. And all of those cameras are allowing us to look at the Earth in a different way. Um, some of it is in infrared, and some of it is just in better um, digital camera views. And so it was um, with great pride that we brought that up as well. And uh, there were um, other experiments that we brought up. I can't name them all, but um, we're glad that they were able to be put into use for the scientists around the world to help us do things better here on Earth, as well as to get ready for exploring. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jessica. I was wondering, why do you think it is so important for women to pursue STEM careers despite all the difficulties we face being a minority in the field? Jessica, I think it's important for women to pursue STEM careers because we're good at them and because um, we're continuing to grow in the field and we're seeing more and more women being successful in those areas. So as we have more mentors that are women, as we see people like Karen Nyberg on the International Space Station and the women that have gone before her, I think it's really important that we realize that uh, this is a place for us and that we can do great things here and that we have great colleagues to share that with. Thank you. Hello, I'm Michelle, and I was wondering what were your responsibilities when you flew on the SDS-131? 
Michelle, that's a great question. Um, I was the flight engineer on the flight deck, which means that I backed up the commander and pilot as we launched into space. And then once we were on orbit, I was a robotic arm operator for the space shuttle's robotic arm, as well as the intravehicular um, crew member who helped with the three spacewalks that we conducted, and I was a mover. We had over six tons of equipment to deliver to the space station, everything from clothing and food to the experiments I've been talking about and logistics racks. And so we were movers, um, robotic arm operators, uh, spacewalkers, and uh, flight engineer. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Diane, and I was wondering how uh, microgravity affected how you ate a meal. That's a great question. Um, microgravity does affect your stomach. It kind of floats up into your um, upper chest. And so when, uh, it, when at first you don't feel real hungry when you get to space, but you know you need to eat, one of the things we had continuously heard from those who flew before us is to make sure that you uh, do the normal eating habits and drinking habits that you have on Earth because they'll keep your body healthy. And so um, some, some challenges that you have, of course, are keeping liquids in containers. Um, we have special pinches on straws that keep the liquids contained in the, in the containers, but sometimes you bump them and they float out and they make big bubbles. So you have to be careful with that. And then um, your food, you, you definitely want to keep it in the containers that you have. So you, you cut them open carefully and you scoop very gently. You don't want to fling food at your neighbors. <laughs> <They're having laughs> to lose food. And, uh, and then sometimes the spices that we take up, you have to be careful with too. I had a little bit of hot sauce that I would put on some eggs one morning and um, the tortilla that I had the egg on kind of got bumped and the eggs got loose and uh, I went to grab them but I also swiped my eye and I got a little bit of hot sauce in my eye and it, it burned oh. a little bit. So you just have to be <laughs> a little more, more careful because your food takes on that third dimension. But I think that caused us to play with food a little bit more. So, um, you know, we'd float chocolates and flip around them and then grab them in our mouth mouth or um, float different m ms to each other. That makes it fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Mira. I was just wondering how your body felt after you came down from the micro, like the microgravity levels up in space. Like, were you sore or tired? Yeah, that's a great question. Our bodies do change while we're in space, and one of the biggest things that we notice are a fluid shift in the and the reduction of blood volume. Um, I felt uh, when I first got back a little bit dizzy. It was hard to walk just straight, and our neurovestibular system, the stuff that keeps us balanced, um, wasn't adapted to Earth's gravity quite yet. It takes um, a little over three days for that to really happen. So I'd find myself walking what I thought was straight, but I might be leaning a little bit. Um, and uh, so it didn't feel 100% the first day, but I did find some time to go out on the beach and dance with my daughter. So I was just extra careful when I was dancing. I didn't do any exotic moves. But um, you just have to be a little bit extra careful those first few days. And as we see folks return from longer space missions, they have a very intensive uh, rehab regimen that they follow. And that's very important. And uh, it's, it starts from that very first day that they return back to Earth and continues for several weeks um, to, to get them all back into shape. So uh, space flight is wonderful, but it does take a little bit of a toll on your body, and we've worked out ways to mitigate that. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kelly, and I was wondering, what is your current like work, like typical work day? Kelly, that's a great question. Um, I'm supporting the International Space Station Operations Branch in our office, and uh, my day job is um, going to different meetings that support future flights and the manifesting of equipment to our crew members, making sure they're going to get the right uh, food and supplies that they're expecting at the times that they're expecting, and uh, and then doing getting chances to talk to students like you or to other outreach um, groups, as well as to share my experiences with space. But every day is a little bit different. Thank you. Okay, hi, my name's Anna, and I was wondering where you hope to see NASA's future after the days of the ISS. 
and I hope we take what we're learning on the ISS and we go out into our solar system for exploration. And I know that one day Mars is going to be our, our destination. And I really, I look forward to that day because I think as a geologist personally, <laughs> there's some exciting stuff that we can do on Mars. Um, there's there's the possibility, of course, of uh, finding more evidence of life. And then I think climbing those mountains and looking at those canyons would be amazing. Um, so I would really like to see us on the surface of Mars one day. OK, thank you. Hi, my name's Haley. And I was wondering, um, since you're also an astronaut educator, what kind of people, like, has that let you? Uh -oh. No more. Did we lose you guys? Kaylee, I heard a little bit of that question. Um, you were asking about being an educator and being an astronaut and who have I had a chance to work with. I do get a chance to work with other uh, teachers and go out and talk to them and share my experiences so that they can take them the experiences into their classroom. And I really enjoy talking to students like you. I know you guys are all juniors and you're here on a summer program. And that takes a lot of dedication. And I know that you're working hard back in your classrooms to have this opportunity. So um, I really enjoy that. Um, aspect of getting to to share with people that um, I once taught in a classroom with or that I was colleagues with um, back about almost nine years ago. Well, thanks. We uh, we really enjoyed you guys joining us here and, and hope that you guys enjoy your stay uh, there as well. There's a lot of exploration tools in that same building where you guys are located. So uh, enjoy your stay. And uh, we really uh, enjoyed those questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys very much.